guys, this is Daithia Garns, the Impact Coach, and welcome to another episode of Three Things to Impact Your Life Today. So just like everyone else, I've been home working to wait out this whole coronavirus situation, and I've actually been busier than ever, surprisingly. So instead of skipping on the video, I decided to just show up as I am today and get this done with no makeup, no special outfit, I'm just coming as I am. <laughs> so today, the three things I'll be discussing to impact your life is faith, hope, and love. And we're definitely in need of all three of these things right now because we're, if we're not careful, fear, hopelessness, and hate will prevail in a world with so much negativity going on. So I definitely want to help avoid that. In 1 Corinthians, Paul describes a various, various spiritual gifts and ways that we can demonstrate God's light in the world. He touches on the gifts of tongues, prophecies with understanding, and faith that could move mountains. But still, he really equates all of these things just to one thing, which is love. In 1 Corinthians 13, 13, he says three things will last forever, faith, hope, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. Many times we skip over this verse arbitrarily because we've heard it and we've read it so many times and we really forget the application and the power of this verse, especially during times such as these. What is the purpose of the special attention? Why are these things the ones that last forever. I believe that the greatest power of our lives is contained in this verse, but it's our job to discover the purpose behind it. So that's what I want to do today, okay? So what is the purpose of faith? Let's start there. Faith is one of the first things that we learn as believers in anything, and it determines the power behind our belief. We've all heard Luke 17 and 6, where he says, if you had faith, even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree or this mountain, may you be moved and thrown into the sea and it would obey you, right? <laughs> Hebrews 11, 1 gives this clear definition of faith when it says that faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen and it gives us assurance that things and the things that we cannot see. Right, I'm sure you guys have heard those verses. The purpose of faith, though, is not to influence our own comfort, but to lead us to work to know the heart of God and to trust his ways to guide us. And I think a lot of people get that confused. It's an action that we take that reminds us of, us of our place on the vine. We are the branches on the vine, and so we cannot do anything apart from the vine, right? And that's okay. I don't mind being a branch. But Hebrews 11.1 1 is a great definition of faith, while Hebrews 11.6 shows us how faith plays out in our daily lives when it says that for we come to God in faith, knowing that he is real and that he rewards the faith of those who passionately or di diligently seek him. We have faith not so that we can be rewarded, but so that we can be powerful in all that we do in this world. The fact that God then rewards that faith is just icing on the already amazing cake, right? So what is the purpose of hope? Have you ever thought about that? Probably not, but I hope you will after today. <laughs> if you want a definition of hope, Google defines it as a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. For me, hope is the confident expectation of what God has promised for me, right? The strength of your hope should be and can be in God's faithfulness not in your own faithfulness or anyone else's faithfulness because we all know that man isn't always faithful, right? Faith is the belief that there is something better to seek, to look for, while hope is the expectation or the certainty that, you know, it's there, right? Hope is what keeps faith alive. They go hand in hand. Faith, which is the seeking of the Lord, connects with hope, which is the expectation of finding him. And the tie that binds them all, or those two things, is wisdom. 
for me, Jesus is my model of constantly seeking wisdom. Whomever you look to as your model in life, um, you should also make sure that they are an example of someone who was constantly seeking spiritual development and growth. It's dangerous to become complacent with with wisdom or feel as if, you know, you have enough, like you're smart enough, right? <laughs> yes, be thankful for what you have, but like Solomon, we must see the value in wisdom because it truly is greater than silver, silver or gold. Gain more wisdom and you can be, you know, confident and sure to always and also have your feel of hope and faith. People always ask me why I'm always going to school, but I love wisdom. I love education. So what is the purpose of love? Paul makes it very clear in 1 Corinthians 13 and 13 that the greatest of all spiritual gifts is love. Why is that? Well, because love is the result of our faith and our hope. Love is our ultimate goal. And understanding this gives us an advantage over other people because we understand what the end goal is. What a better way to win at life or anything than knowing the end goal and then using the tools that you have to accomplish it. 1 John 4, 7 through 8 says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. It goes on to say in verse 19 that we love because God first loved us. So the purpose of love has two parts. First, it gives us an identity. It tells us who God is and who we are in him, right? Second, it gives us the power to do and be and, you know, do and be who and what we're called to to do and be, right? (laughs) People often ask me why or how I can forgive others so quickly. Many times they don't understand me and I get, you know, talked about. But love has the power to help us believe again and restore hope in other people. This is true even when they let us down time and time and time again. It doesn't mean that we should allow ourselves to be taken advantage of. No, I don't agree with that. But it does mean that we should allow love to drive us spiritually, emotionally, and even physically. Love sometimes means doing tough things or things that may hurt us or other people. But as long as love is the greatest thing in our hearts, the outcome will be just right? Do you agree with that? I hope so. Now, in closing, if faith, hope, and love are the things that last forever, then it's easy to understand why these are the things we should pursue in order to have peace and joy and anything else that we seek. If we seek these things, even in perilous times like these, I truly believe that we'll all be okay. Today, let's not fear corona or any other virus. Let's not make it our focus, but let's focus on faith, hope, and love, okay? And I absolutely love you guys.